Yeah, hello scrappers. Today uh, we try to tear down a couple of these electric motors over here. Yeah, where'd they go? There they are. Yeah, I'm getting quite a bit there. Got a couple little barrels full of them. Plus I got more outside with all those uh, other units. Yeah, you go out the door here. And you can see one sitting right on top of that unit there. Yeah, this tripod's a little sticky, plus I got a hammer in my hand. So yeah, you can see that fan. Electric motor right there on top of it. So I got a bunch of those out there I gotta get to yet. But I wanted to show you a couple little so I'll be using the vise, the little rock, rocky vise. It's on a little pedestal basically. It rocks a bit, but when you're using it, it's not really a hassle. Uh, probably gets people seasick watching the video. <coughs> but what I want to show it show is this is a one of the little flywheels off a of, push mower with Tecumseh motor and you got a counterweight here and then right here is your magnet so now Briggs, Honda, stuff like that they have more of a flat face on it and then the magnet is built in and the counterweights built in and for the life of me I haven't figured out how to get them out of there so but I have found an easy way to get these out so thought I'd show you that little tip And basically, take a good sized pin punch. That's probably a good quarter inch or so. Now, we'll go with the counterweight first. I think I'll go ahead and try to zoom in a little better. Move the tripod a little bit closer. Loosen everything up, might turn a little, move a little bit easier. I want to do this on the vise, that way everything has somewhere to go as I try to punch it through. So, so right here we go to the opposite, and we basically, the first couple I did on this, I drilled it out. Drilled, drilled the hole down through the metal, but then I found out later I didn't really have to. Now this isn't this isn't the ball pin hammer I really want. The one I really like. It's a little bit heavier than this. It's got a black handle. I don't know where I set that thing down at. Okay, you can already see the thing starting to come out of there. I've got a nice little hole in the back. that. Toss it in the bucket over there so I don't trip on it. Now we still have the pin right there. So I got this one here. Just gonna knock it to the side. Okay now that's out of there. So that part is clean. Now I'll go ahead and stay with this one here. Uh, see if it says what size. Wear safety goggles. I am not seeing a size on that. Hmm. It's about 3 16 something like that. Not real big. Okay, now. These pins are set back way back into here. So I'm not sure if we can just I'm gonna try to knock it in right there, see what happens.
I may have to just pry those out. Might be what I have to do. And if I gotta do that, I'm gonna put it in the vise and clamp her down and see if I can't tap them out. If I just get in here. Can't tell if they're moving yet or not. Keeps breaking loose in the vise. Let me get the bigger punch. I really don't want to spend too much time on this. It's been a year or so since I've cleaned any of these up. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be doing any good. So we'll pass on that part and try to get right about. It's kind of funny because right where I got to go is right where that lip is. We broke through the we broke through the aluminum. Okay, that knocked it right on out of there. Looky there. So now we have clean cast aluminum. And then we got a couple little chunks of metal that, that kind of hit wedged it in and we got a nice little magnet. So that's how I found to do those. Some of you, uh, some of you other scrappers may have done those, may have a better way. <coughs> then another thing I got off those motors which uh, I brought two of them in the other day and took the fans off. And this one here, I could not get it to slide down the shaft. I had the little nut here nice and loose, but a lot of rust on there, so it just would not slide. So I had to take the sawzall and cut it. So I thought I'd show you how And as you can see, it's aluminum, and we got steel here. Our rivets are steel. So, how I do those normally, which for those that don't have a lot of tools, you can use just a cold chisel. Or put it in ice or something. And just chisel across there. I'm not going to do that. Take up a lot of time. Or you can do the back. It's another place the air chisel comes in handy.
that's all there is to that. Let's clean that right up. Yeah, we got some nice sheet aluminum. Okay, I'm going to try to set this a little more. I have to move my monitor forward some. Set this a little more to the side. Yep, sorry about that. I remember all these rivets, they were just, they were tin, magnets stuck to them. Oh, the other day I was out, got that one load that I brought in that the truck broke down on. That guy had, uh, I don't know if these mud, homemade mud flaps or what, but uh, some nice good thick rubber. Now this little coating here, that's just the belt off a treadmill. So if you guys get a scrap tre treadmill and need uh, toolbox drawer liners or something to cover your workbench with, those belts off a treadmill work great. I like old mud flaps for air chiseling on because I have tore up some good workbenches. I used to just keep 2x6s, 2x8s, whatever around to use as a base when chiseling. And then I found out about these uh, mats. I'm going to throw a pair of gloves on and then I'll throw one of the motors up here. And uh, we'll go ahead and Strip it down. This, this is the one I cut the shaft off of. Oh, let's see. This bolt here is bent, so bend that back straight or break it off something. Now, usually I try to. Just got two of the screws already out, and I didn't bring my drill and my little nut drivers in so I'll be right back on that okay we're back bring this up a little bit make sure you can see what I'm doing here okay I found out that's a nine which I got a nine on this side and it's a little bit sloppy but should do the trick Okay, that one came off already. Look down there in my little pin bucket. This one will probably come off this side too because that other side is pretty rusty. Pull those out. Hang this back up with my little wrenches. <laughs> Once the screws are out, And to get all the aluminum we can, I still got to finish getting that off. Now I got to go out and get that. Could do that with the die grinder, but uh, angle grinder so much faster. Anyway, I got uh, this little thing I made up. Sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you have to take a punch and knock them through. Now some of you know that have been following my channel, a lot of times I like taking these because I look at all that aluminum. I thought, man, you know, that's, there's a nice chunk of aluminum there. So that's part of the reason I built that uh, waste oil burner, where I could try to melt that off of there. And uh, so I'll throw this in a bucket over here for aluminum to be melted, and then that'll end up going in... Yeah, I'll melt the aluminum off of it, and then I'll throw that in tin. Then I can take that aluminum and make ingots out of it. And the plan is to sell those ingots on eBay. I don't know if I've mentioned to you guys about the... Well, I'll be right back again. I'm going to get the angle grinder and get my pry bar. I don't have them in here. 
That's the problem with a lot of times it gets too hot in here, so I work in the other area. So then I'm in here doing something, and all the tools I need are out in the other area. Plus, I am done with this. Yeah. So. Okay. Wasn't sure which one I needed, so grabbed uh, this, this little shorty. I actually picked that up, scrapping the tool, junk toolbox. And then we got this little one. A lot of times I just pull down here and these will pop up. They get they get real stubborn. Let's check that magnet. Yeah, 10 sticks. They get real stubborn. Okay, got the little felt stuff out of there, so that's clean. Cast. A lot of times I call YouTube YouTube University. So if they get a stubborn one, which I got an overhang here, so I can actually clamp it down. It's still loose. And then take and get in there with that being clamped down. It holds good. I call YouTube a lot of times YouTube University because there's just so much you can learn. Well, on my half ton truck, I don't know why I never seen these videos before, but uh, I'm thinking the cable was stretched out because it started out when I was hauling junk cars. I'd get on an incline and I'd just put it in park. Well, the weight of the the truck on the incline plus the trailer weighs 2,500 pounds and then whatever vehicle I had on it all that weight would be pushing against that parking pin so I'd have to pull it out of there pretty hard and I thought by doing that I might have stretched the, the shifting cable so I thought okay I gotta replace the shifting cable and then the shifting arm I need to replace it because the, the button you push to keep it from going into uh, overdrive that has quit working so I, I do need to replace it but I saw two videos today they're talking about two bolts that hold the bracket down there for the shifting column, uh, shifting mechanism. And uh, it's a, I don't know if it's a metric bolt, but it takes a, what do you say, a 30, size 30 Torx. And uh, so I went out here just before I started this video and got, got up under the dash, which for my size, it's not easy to do. And uh, sure enough, one of those bolts was gone and the other one was very loose so now I guess I gotta call a dealership or I could probably get under there pull the other bolt out but kind of leery on doing that because then I gotta try to remember or figure out where it goes back in sometimes that's not the easiest so but I thought if I had to I could do that I wish I had an old Ford laying around out in the field, but I don't. I've had, I've had a couple out there a few years back, and I wish I would have known about this. I would have got under there and uh, pulled those screws out of there. So I can probably find something else if I knew what size thread. But, uh, yeah, and that one's clean now. Anyway, I think the best thing to do is just go to the Ford dealership and tell them what I need and they should they should have them or at least be able to tell me how long the bolt is and what what thread you know what thread pattern it has on it now when I get to this part which you could probably right from here chisel chisel the windings out but uh, what I like doing is but sometimes I do go by this sometimes I don't and I don't know if the camera's picking this up or not but you can see the daylight through there on some of those so there's, there's little places that you can it's got daylight so there's one right here so I'll get my angle grinder You 
don't have to get in any hurry doing that. It's pretty thin metal. I just get light pressure and uh, cuts it pretty easy. Make sure you keep your hands off to the side for safety. Of course, wear gloves, eye protection for sure. And then we've got a piece of tin there. Got our copper. So I might as well go ahead and chisel this down while I'm at it. I uh, put the narrower chisel on there. And then I gave it a little touch up on the grinder the other day, so it should be sharp. Try to get it in there right next to the metal. chisel. Some people take the sawzall and cut that off. Others use that maybe angle grinder. I guess you can put it in a vise or something too. And if you have a quarter band with a power band saws, you can cut it with it. tried uh, taking any of this in with these strings on it into the scrap yard. They probably wouldn't say anything. Not that much weight, but uh, right now I'm just stockpiling all this anyway. And I think it'll pack down in the barrel better with, if it has more freedom of movement. And I think those strings kind of restrict movement a little bit. I know I'm probably losing my mind, but yeah. yeah. 
I'd be losing my mind, but I'm happy. So, yeah. I hope everybody's doing okay out there. If you're enjoying this video or learning anything, I, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Hoping one day to get a thousand subscribers. I'm getting close to the halfway point. I'm kind of excited about that. I see a lot of other channels doing giveaways. I kind of thought I could probably do some kind of giveaway. I'm not really all sure how all they do that, but uh, then I'm thinking, okay, what would I give away? You know, I wanted something to be pretty nice. And one time, in a way, I like to keep it scrapping related, but uh, I was thinking about a coin ring at one time. That's one of my other hobbies. I haven't even made a ring in about a year now. Well, no, I did make one when I started this channel last August. August, September. But, like I said, my workbench is out here in the shop. And that time of year, it's pretty hot. I can run fans, it makes it a little more bearable. And, best thing is if I get out here before, before it gets real hot, in the, you know. Even now, it's, it's a little bit humid, but it's only in the 60s. It feels pretty good out here for the most part. Okay, I got a lot of little bits of copper here. I'll sort through that later. I'll push it to the back. It's nice having a, a big pad to get work on again. Sometimes you can get these out of the hole. Other times you can't. So much slack on this thing, it doesn't really want to move. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the strings. A few new people watching, I like using these hook blades. You can get, should be able to get them at Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware. Should be able to get them just about anywhere. A lot of roofers use them. They work great for cutting shingles. Yeah, I did a lot of roofing in my younger days, back in the 70s. Early 80s I did some. The reason I went with them is your straight blades, you have you cutting them strings, you're running that tip right along the copper, and uh, it's probably dull on the blade. Uh, let's see what they do with my. There they are. My little side cutters. Cut those two connectors off of there. And I'll throw those in the little bucket of wire I got over here. Yeah, once that's off of there, a lot of times all that shellac just glues these things together. Work my way around some of the 
pound it row. Man, that was. Try my flat screwdriver. Okay, now that one's up. in on this a little better get a little more towards the center of the screen you can see how I have different areas pulled up and I get a hold of it with the channel locks and just use the, the rounded edge of the, edge of the channel locks to just kind of pry it up up and out. Regrab. Give it a twist. Scrappers, coppers, orange gold, isn't it? The red gold. It's about what pays the best. Sometimes just gotta pull it away, I guess. Pull it away from the others, break it loose. all those in half. Well, hopefully I can pull them out now and get a good bite on them. Yeah, that's not really wanting to come out, is it? Sometimes I bend over at the bottom, makes them hard to come out. Now those things are just ripping off. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Well, Sometimes you get into these tough ones. Sometimes you gotta you can straighten them back up. And sometimes there's so much shellac in there. I have I have had to take punches and drive them through, and that might be what I have to do to this one. chisel just pushes them kind of over the edge and then it makes them hard to pull back through. This video is getting way too long so I guess I'll uh, you guys get the idea how to pull it out of there. So hope you enjoyed. Feel free to comment and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. So. Happy scrapping. Stay safe, everybody. Yeah. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.